one band you can't get into no matter how many times you've tried? I might lose my entire following for this answer. I might get canceled for this answer. I fear the NotFest community might disown me. Before I say my answer, I just want to say, it's not that I don't have respect for this band. I have the utmost respect for them. What's going on? This is Tori Kravitz. Welcome to a new episode of She's With The Band, a very unique episode of She's With The Band, because guess what, y'all? I'm your guest. <laughs> So I know normally this is very like guest driven series where we're interviewing other femme professionals in the metal scene. Um, but the reality is y'all are having to deal with me every other week on this podcast. So I thought it'd be fun for, for us to do a Q&A. See, we could get to know a little more about each other, spend some quality time hanging. So thank you for putting up with me, for hanging with me. Um, and this is a little out of my depth because I'm not normally the one on the other side of the question. So I've brought in a good friend, uh, Jade Pike. Hello, everybody. <laughs> now, Jade and I, aside from being girly pop's best friends, Lil Sis, she is a very intentional person that I brought in for this episode because you're also a pro in the industry. You're yes. doing like a, a artist management internship right now. Um, you're a photographer at a local venue. And also, most importantly, and my favorite thing is you run Backward Noise, an awesome music publication. Um, do you want to tell us a little more about just like everything you have going on? Yeah, so... Basically, I started as a concert photographer, and that's kind of where my journey in the music industry started. And as a concert photographer, I just kind of grew and have probably been working in that for about six years now. So doing that is really what prompted me to start Backward Noise because I wanted to provide a space for other creators like me in the music industry uh, photographers, writers, etc., that wanted to get involved in the music industry and talk about the things that they love, create with the things that they love. So that's why I started Backward Noise. And uh, we are a online digital music publication, been running about four years now. We are on our seventh issue right now with our special cover star, Return to Dust, which is available for pre-order, so you guys should pick up a copy. <laughs> she is hustling on this episode yeah. already. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, it's a good issue. And I Return say. to Dust is amazing. Like, if anyone who's into sort of grungy rock, right? Like, yeah, definitely. Sick. Super grunge rock. Very great guys. Love them. But anyway, enough about that. Tori, <laughs> are you ready to be questioned in a moment in a moment don't put me in the hussy yet i'm gonna uh, try and I'm kill so some ready. time i'm, I'm gonna, so ready <laughs> i'm buying time okay because i do just want to acknowledge as well like i appreciate how our journeys are so parallel because you're a little bit younger than me but also started your own publication to make your own opportunities which to me is so inspiring and why I wanted to have you on this podcast because I say it all the time like anybody who wants to get in the music industry any especially femme people who are struggling to find opportunities you can make your own yes, like I definitely. had my own blog YouTube channel that's how I started doing interviews and so like when I became a publicist and was pitching you and then learned more about you and like what you do with background noise I was like we're in the same journey so yeah I have utmost adm admiration respect and it's cool to have you be kind of little sis, big sis in the industry as we're in it together. Aww. So well, thank yeah. you, Tori. Thank you. Just want to give so you the, much. the nod because it's cool what you do. So anybody who wants to learn more about Jade, check out Backward Noise if you like supporting indie music publications, which you should because yes, print magazines are also kind of a dying art. Well, so. it's alive as long as you keep it alive and I love it. So I'm keeping it alive. Atta girl. There we go. All right. Well, should we, should we dive into this Q&A? I think so. I think we're oh, ready. I will say too, all of these were submitted by you all, these questions. I asked you guys on Instagram for questions. I was like, nothing's off the table. Whatever you want to ask me, bring it on. And uh, I've gotten a plethora of questions. I honestly just pasted them all in a Word doc and gave it to Jade. So I haven't really looked at them yet. So thank you yeah. to everyone who submitted questions. These so. are some good questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm not the interviewee typically, but I'm excited. Okay, hit me. Okay. So, starting off, have you been thrown into a last-minute interview with a band before, and how did you handle it? This doesn't count. <laughs> this does feel like a last-minute interview. My, my face is getting flushed. Oh. But I have, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I feel like when you work in music, it happens all the time, where you'll be at a festival, and, and some publicist just pulls you aside saying, hey, will you interview my band real quick? Like, that happened to me with Greta Van Fleet before they were huge. What? Like, their publicist just ran after me and in a press area. I was like, will you interview them? And I was like, okay. And stuff like that happens all the time. 
The craziest one for me ever was, <laughs> oh, it was so bonkers. It was my first day of Warp Tour 2015. Okay. I was nervous enough. I was 18 years old, literally the biggest job of my entire life thus far ever. It's literally day one of the tour. There was a live stream that Warp Tour was doing in 2015. And it went out to, I think, over 200,000 people around the world. And it was of all the bands. And originally, Andy from Black Veil Brides mm-hmm. and his partner, Juliet Sims, Lil Tsar, who's been on this podcast. I love her. They were originally supposed to be the hosts of the live stream. I have no idea what happened day of, but I get a text saying, Tori, we need you to step in. <laughs> And I'm already panicking enough because I have to do my first pip log ever. Yeah. And I'm amongst all of my, like, favorite bands ever. That's wild. On what was, like, the biggest touring festival ever. And now you want me to host a live stream that I'm ill-equipped to handle and not prepared for? Okay. That is actually crazy. Yeah. And so how did you deal with that? How did it go? It went great because I, you know... I think it just comes with being any sort of performer, whether you're on stage or you're a journalist and you're in front of a camera, you have to be able to improvise. If if you can't improvise, you're in the wrong job. Definitely. And so I was prepared because at the very least, I'm an expert on Warped Tour bands. So you ask me an interview, set it off. I know what their latest album is. I know what they're doing. Like, I'm just always educated. I think it was them and like Bless the Fall. Then I had to introduce a couple bands on stage, which was, that was the scary part, like being in front of an audience, which I don't normally do. And then like I had to do a few segments that I had to film, but it went really well. Like for me, if it's, let's say it's a band I don't know super well, even then I'll just sidebar with them before we start and be like, what do you want to promote? What's going on with you real quick? Because they appreciate that. Bands like that you care and you're asking instead of just being like, so how'd you come up with your band name? Yeah, I so. think I have definitely been told a lot of times in er- interviews that bands find it very refreshing to have more personal questions yeah. like that that are more in tune with what they're actually doing and not just the simple questions yeah. like, oh, what's your band name? What's your favorite song to play live? <laughs> like those are big like, no-no questions. Just yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Unless, unless there's like a reason for it and you're like promoting a tour or something I don't know and you're like what's your favorite song to play live like that makes sense and even still you can ask better questions yeah tour (laughs) get creative guys come on yeah for sure and like the thing is too any interview is a conversation so as long as you have that beginning base point of like the thing they want to promote all you have to do is listen and you can improvise an interview based on their answers exactly so like the key to improvising an interview is listening I period. agree. Yes, period. Mic drop. <laughs> Which, by the way, I just want to say, I started saying period at the end of almost everything, and it's all your fault. I'm so sorry. No, you're not. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not sorry at all. But, okay. Well, I love that. Thanks. So, moving on. Okay. What is your most fulfilling experience of your career so far? Hmm. Doing the Knotfest series beyond the breakdown is the most fulfilling experience of my life. In my opinion, it is the thing I've been working towards my entire career. To do a series of that scale and that is like a full production, full length documentary. And it requires a lot of intensive research. It requires like really knowing a band front and back. And for me, that's like so exciting to do something that in depth. And having like actual cinematographers on deck, like it's a whole thing. And I've been able to travel for it. Like every episode that we've filmed, which there are more than two episodes, by the way, like there are more episodes coming and they're amazing bands. Oh yeah, they are. Oh yeah, they are. Oh yeah, they are. (laughs) Notfest.com, subscribe to Premium to see it. Um, Electric Callboy and Enter Shikari are the two episodes that are out right now. Um, But every time we filmed an episode, I call my mom that day and I go, this is the best day of my life. This is the coolest episode I've ever filmed. This is the best thing I've ever done. And I've said that for every episode. And it just keeps getting better. Yes. So we have things to be excited for. Oh, yeah. Like, Nafest Premium is really crushing right now. Like, if you're a metalhead, which obviously you are if you're listening to this podcast and you want the best quality content, like, Nafest Premium is basically a streaming platform plus pre-sales and all the things. So... Shout out Office Premium for for allowing me to really live my dream with Beyond the Breakdown. It's been, I mean, it's total fan service, those episodes too. Like if you're into yeah. those bands. And yeah. I think that's honestly some of the most important things when it comes to like content like that. Mm-hmm. When it comes to interviews and showcasing behind the scenes of the band, a lot of that is 
good if it's fan service just because that's what the fans are going to be reposting on their fan mm-hmm. pages that's what's going to get the interaction that's what's going to make them grow so i love watching those things totally. i was so excited when i saw beyond the breakdown come out and i was yes. so proud of you thank you but i think it's just getting bigger and bigger every time and I can't wait to see what else it brings to your career. Thank you. I do also yeah. want to say She's of the Band has been extremely fulfilling too. Like every guest I've had on has ended up becoming a friend. And I think I've learned so much about myself through it and just about ways to improve the industry for femme people. And I don't know, it's just been amazing and fulfilling to connect in a human way with so many people. So yeah, that too. But, I think yeah. that's special. I feel like honestly, this feels so much more personal than traditional ways of approaching music journalism whether that be like written editorial interviews or even sometimes like just like zoom call interviews and stuff like that this just feels so much more personal to actually get to sit down and have a conversation Mm -hmm. with you so I think that it brings such a different perspective when it comes to talking to other women who work in the music industry because they feel safe to talk to you like they feel like they have this connection with you in the room and I think we're all struggling (laughs) yeah we are all struggling it's hard out here it is but I think that's what that's what makes Cheese with the Band stand out. Thank you. Yeah. My my cheerleader, my hype queen. I am. I'm just <laughs> like I'm just a hype woman over here. It goes here. both ways. It does though. Tori is my biggest hype woman and I'm her biggest <laughs> hype woman. So I like these questions a lot. I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> Because I feel like I'm going to learn about you. That I don't know these things about you. Oh, okay. I, well, I don't, now I don't know what's going on because you're reading the questions and you're saying this, but you're not telling me. So now I'm just getting... Well, now I'm going to ask a question and you're going to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm like talking like it's super serious, but it's, um, do you speak Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> Who asked this? <laughs> uh, no habla espanol. Um... Me either. I honestly took like 10 years of Spanish in high school, as a lot of kids probably did in the U.S., but none of it stuck. I am Brazilian. My mom's Brazilian, so I'm more likely to know some Portuguese. Like, I, it, if anyone talks shit about me in Portuguese, I will know. Oh, yeah. I want to say. Um, but Spanish, no. That's fair. Yeah. Me neither. See. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Si. laughs> okay. Do you like deathcore? duh like that's i mean yes i i i mean it's so weird with all the cores because i do think they all sort of blend together like i know that it's very nuanced and there are differences in the different cores but at the end of the day i love heavy music of all sorts i don't discriminate it's honestly kind of getting confusing it is there's all these sub genres pop up and i'm like what is this? Yeah. And then I listen to it. I'm like, oh, that's just heavy. <laughs> like, that's, it's just heavy. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. Like, sometimes I'm like, okay, is this death core, metal core? And then some bands are like, we're both. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, can you just say you're heavy? Yeah. I mean, I feel like that might make it, make it easier for everybody. Sometimes. Just I, tell me there's a chug chug. Yeah. And I'll be like, sick. Do you go bleh? <laughs> but that's yeah, what I need. Death core sick. Yeah. To answer the question simply <laughs> i think death core is sick i love all kinds of heavy music too yes so i mean obviously i wouldn't be here if i didn't yeah i mean we definitely bond over a lot of the we do the heavy bands yeah okay this one might get a little revealing oh no what is your most embarrassing moment that happened during an interview or at a concert okay I'm going to throw it back to 2015. No, 2010. 2010. That's when I did my first interview ever. Um, my That's mom. So long ago. I know. I'm old. That's 14 years ago. I'm almost years 30. Ago. <laughs> I've been doing this since I was 15. I mean, me too, but that just makes me feel like a baby. You're a baby. Okay, anyway. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so I was 15 years old doing my first interview ever. It was with a band that I loved called The Downtown Fiction. Shout out if anybody remembers The Downtown Fiction. They were my MySpace song back in the day. Loved them. And my mom was filming the interview with me at the time because obviously I was baby. So I needed parental yes. supervision before going yes. to the band's dressing room. And um, I was super nervous. My hands were shaking because not only was I meeting this band, but also doing an interview for the first time. There's just a lot of pressure. I'm sitting on the couch with them. We're about to start the interview and my mom's phone rings, but it doesn't just ring. (laughs) Her ringtone is TikTok by Kesha. And 
don't stop, make it pop, just comes blaring through her phone as we're about to hit record for the interview. And I'm mortified. Okay, but that's kind of an iconic ringtone. Yeah, but also, like, that's my mom. Mom, stop it. Yeah. You know, when you're a teenager, no, yeah. you're just like, mom. Oh, I get it. Don't, you're making me look uncool. Yeah. Now I, I would, I, I think now I don't really think of embarrassing moments because I'm not easily embarrassed. I just kind of laugh things off. True. I think that comes with age and confidence, right? But, yeah, when I was 15, that really stuck with me. And it also really derailed me from the interview. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, because when something like that happens, it kind of sets you off guard and then, like you lose the groove that you were getting yourself into yeah. sometimes so especially with like a first interview though it was yeah. panic mode and I was like mother well how did they react to it though to be honest I don't remember I blacked out <laughs> that's so real that is so real I, I honestly think I blacked out when that happened I don't know okay, I'm sure they were well, very kind about it I mean I met all of them again years later doing warp tour and stuff and aw. it was all fine and dandy they did not bring it up so. big reunion moment oh and ooh. I just remembered another one. Okay. I have to shout out Crown the Empire because Andy, every time I see him, does bring up this embarrassing moment. Wow, sorry, just hitting my microphone. I'm all <laughs> excited. Andy brings this up every single time I see him. Another one that my mom filmed. Oh, no. <laughs> and um, we film like the first half of an interview. It's Andy from Crown the Empire and me. And there's no audio. My mom stops recording, says there's no audio. So we start filming again. And obviously by then, it's like now we're re- enacting a conversation we already had so it's already awkward yeah second time we get a couple questions in no audio we filmed it a third time through and then there was audio wow but to this day i swear to god andy does not let me escape this he's like remember we had to film an interview three times i'm like please (laughs) it's been 10 like it's been 10 years that's a way to get someone to remember you though i I mean, look, him and I are pals now, but I just, I hope for a day where I can, so silly. I can live that down. (laughs) Well, what, like, were you, you were using like a camera, like a DSLR? It It was like a camcorder. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see. That's okay. (laughs) Everything. It it happens. Embarrassing only because Andy won't let it go. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, I'm sorry. Andy, if you're listening, you should probably <laughs> forgive me. Forgive Tori. And my mother. <laughs> and Tori's mom. It wasn't Tori's mom's fault, and it wasn't Tori's fault. So let's get over it. Thanks. It's fine. I I mean, I forgive him. So we're off to a good start. It's we're just adults. silly. It's, it's silly, silly, goofy behavior. Yes. <laughs> See, now I like this question a lot. You should tell me about your dream band collaboration. Mm. So this is one where I peeped the the paper briefly trying to cheat before this started. And I was like, oh, God, who is it? But to me, my first inclination is Alcest and Chelsea Wolfe. Ooh. Um, Because Alcest is like French shoegaze ambient metal. Chelsea Wolfe is the witchy also ambient yeah experimental metal and i just think the two of them could do something really wild that would go kind of crazy i'm just a moody girl i love the moody doomy metal and i think that's a dream for sure and also they're just beautiful people i just want to see them on a stage together yes and after seeing the chelsea wolf converge collab and seeing how well that went i'm just a nerd for anything chelsea wolf collabs on and i see how well that went i want more so yeah that's me do you have one yeah, but mine feels basic now. That's fine. Okay. Well, mine is... Well, wait. I was, like, just making sure they haven't done it before. But it was just a tour. It's okay. Bring Me the Horizon and Bad Omens. How has that not happened yet? I know. That's why I was just, like, questioning myself, thinking, well, has it happened? But they have never actually done a song together. They just toured together and then... Like, they played on stage together. They did Antivist together on the That's tour. That's what I'm thinking of. So good. And isn't Noah, I mean, Noah's super inspired by Bring Me. Oh, yeah. Like, so. he's quoted being inspired by Bring Me, like, so many times before. Oh, TikTok. I know. Yeah, we're waiting, guys. <laughs> but maybe, maybe next Bad Omens album. We didn't get it on the Bring Me album, but maybe we'll get it on the Bad Omens album. I appreciate the speculation. I like where your head's at. I like thinking about these things. This is what I think about before I go to sleep at night. And have sweet dreams. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, I guess talking about albums and things, what made you get into music journalism? Mm. I get this question so much. So once and for all, let's answer it. Um, I was like a street teamer back in the day, like on MySpace. Like I was the girl going to shows, passing out promo cards. That's so Posting fun. bulletins, being like, check out this band. Always commenting on bands' profiles. Like I was just, I've just always been obsessed with music. I mean, I was a part of fan clubs when I was like 12 years old. Yeah. I mean, it was for Hillary Duff, but I digress. I've always been really passionate. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I had a friend who had a music blog. And I thought that was super cool because I'm like, I just want to talk about music, promote the music I love, support the bands I love, yada, yada. And so she asked me if I would do some interviews for her. And I did. And I was like, wait, so this is like a thing you could do? You know, like what yeah. you've done with Backward Noise and what I did with, with Rock Forever Magazine, my YouTube channel. It's like you could just start a publication and interview bands you love. Like that is a thing. Yeah. And it just boggled my mind. Um and it was just a very organic way for me to maybe turn the thing that I was already doing as a hobby on social media into something that I don't know if it, I had no intention of it leading to a career or what it was going to turn into, but I just knew it could be something more than just a hobby somehow. Right. Um, and so I just went for it because I, I didn't want to yeah. work under my friend. I'm like, well, I'm going to do this then. Yeah. So that's what I did. That reminds me so much of like how I got into it too, because I remember just coming across this small like independent publication on Twitter well, what used to be Twitter, <laughs> but RIP. Yeah. And I just like came across it one day and I was like, wait, what is this? Like, mm -hmm. you're telling me that people my age, like when I was in high school, like yeah. people my age, college students are running this magazine that's interviewing bands that I love. Mm -hmm. And people are on this magazine as photographers, concert photographers to go and photograph concerts. Mm -hmm. Like, you mean I can work? concerts because it seems I like never considered so, that it's like something you it's intangible yeah when you see like when you see photographers in a photo pit you have no idea how they got there yeah and so then the realization that anybody can do it if you just pursue it properly that's crazy <laughs> yeah I mean I just sent them an email and I was like hey I've never shot a concert before but I snuck my camera into warp tour <gasps> hey I'm telling the Lyman's anyways honestly I think that they had an open camera policy oh I don't know <laughs> I genuinely <laughs> think that they were like, bring your cameras. Oh, so you didn't even sneak it in. You're good. Yeah, but I just say I snuck it in because it sounds cooler. <laughs> Sorry, I ruined your credit. Yeah. Continue. Anyway, for as long as you guys know, I snuck my camera into Warp Tour. Unless you're Kevin Lyman, I didn't do that. Anyway. Period. So anyways, all that to say, like, if anybody's wondering how to become an interviewer, become a photographer... All you have to do is start a well. Don't do a blog spot. That's what I did, but that's like outdated oh, yeah, now. I don't know. At least do a Wix. Wix is even. I don't know. It's hard me. to navigate. I use Squarespace. Squarespace. I like Squarespace, but I mean, or that's YouTube if you want to invest. Twitch. Oh yeah, Twitch is popping off right now. Yeah, all There's, the things. Yeah, anybody can do it. So, highly recommend it. It's a very fun way to get into the music industry and do things that you love and feel passionate about. And network. Now. We're going to go off topic for a second because this is really important and I need to know the answer to this. Okay. And apparently one of you does too. <laughs> what is your favorite cereal? Yeah, who's asking these questions? Thank you for your question and concern. Um, to be honest, I don't eat cereal. Me neither. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I just wasn't allowed to have it as a kid, so now it's just like not a habit. Yeah. But if I'm going to eat a cereal... Hmm. Corn pops are kind of banging. <laughs> what? <laughs> is that is that like not a good answer? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't know what is a good answer. I think this show this shows the age gap. <laughs> like I still want to eat Lucky Charms. Oh, got you. I don't know if those are vegan though. Otherwise, okay, I would say right. yes to Lucky Charms. I actually don't know what but, cereals are vegan. But so. the other one in my mind is also just further proving an age gap because it's Raisin Bran. Oh, no. No, no, no Raisin Bran slander on this podcast. No, no Raisin Bran, Bran, oh my gosh, Raisin Bran, Bran. <laughs> slander. No, not at all. Then what's the issue? That was not in my pantry growing up. <laughs> <laughs> That's my issue. Got you. Got so, you. I mean, I don't know. I kind of like Cheerios, though. Cheerios go kind of hard. They, they're serving nothing. <laughs> 
Cheerios are serving nothing. Literally, yeah. Sometimes you just, that's just what you need. Um, is this a commentary about my dating life now? Sorry. That's Anyways. Crazy. Anyways. So, we should talk about music again. Your face is turning red. For anybody who's listening on audio, I've made her nervous. Anyways. Yeah. Anyway. That's not what this podcast is for. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, okay. Get it together. We're together. Good. One band you can't get into no matter how many times you've tried. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I might lose my entire following for this answer. I might get canceled for this answer. I fear the NotFest community might disown me. It's not Slipknot, though. But I feel like I you might would get, get fired some, for that. Yeah, and I love Slipknot. It's Slipknot's not that great. Yeah. But I do feel like I might get in some trouble, but I want to be honest. Before I say my answer, I just want to say it's not that I don't have respect for this band. I have the utmost respect for them. Sleep sleep token. Okay. So hear me out. Ooh. <laughs> hear me out. I respect the hell out of their branding. I think their music is great quality. I think their music is good. Like, from a music critic standpoint, obviously, like, they're super talented. The vocals are outrageous. I love the aesthetics. What they've done to build a fan base is revolutionary. Absolutely. So I admire and respect them. I've tried so many times to listen to the album, though, and I just – it just doesn't stick for me in a way that I resonate with. But I – like, if I had an opportunity to go see them live, I'm there. They're so good. (laughs) I think I just lost a friend. (laughs) No. But that one hurt a little bit. I feel you. I I, hear you. Yeah. I know a lot of people are probably like, wow. That hurt a little bit. But that's okay. I mean, I understand because I feel like Sleep Token is a very experimental band. Mm -hmm. So if it's not for you, it's just not for you. Like, they just do so many things that are honestly kind of like weird but like i say weird in a good way i don't and i know another word for that a lot of people too have like emotionally resonated with what they yeah like with their music and what their lyrics are about and i am such a supporter of that i have no beef with them oh yeah no um it's just yeah it just Just didn't it just didn't strike the chord for me that's That's okay but i mean yeah not everybody is gonna be a fan of every band and that just happens that's just how the world works guys And I will say another one for me, which is kind of the exact same answer, where it's like, respect the hell out of them. Their fan base is outrageous. And I, I, I don't know. I just love bands with cult followings and oh, meaning yeah. in their music. But for me, My Chem is another one where yeah. I like the hits and I, I would love to see them live. Oh, but yeah. I'm not like the diehard. Like, I just, it never clicked with, in that way with me. I was a pair yeah. more girly and like oh, yeah. fly leaf and stuff like that in that era. Well, I was very also big my chem girly but wow i've fully lost friend episode's over everyone all right we did we <laughs> no. got we got exactly halfway through it's We're a little done. tense now no no do you have any do you want to try and offend me do real I, quick? I i don't think i i feel like i would just get canceled by everybody like those your your takes are hot <laughs> but <laughs> they're a little spicy i know they're they're pretty spicy but will they get you canceled uh, probably not okay I don't think so. Mine might. I'll think about it, and I'll get back to you later. Okay. All right. We'll do this off camera. Yeah. I'll spare you. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. But I don't have an answer to this next one. I will be surprised if you do. What is your best mosh pit experience? Ooh. I don't like mosh pits. They're scary. I, I don't go in them often, but I actually have one really positive experience. Okay. Um, I have one really negative one where the person I was with ended up in crutches. So that was, I mean, that was at a Limp Bizkit show. Okay, well, um, I feel like you're asking <laughs> for it at a Limp, at a Limp yeah, Bizkit show. I, well, I was super excited to go, like, right in the front. I handled the mosh pit with grace, may I add. I knew how to handle myself in a mosh pit. He, on the other hand, crutches. That's um, so silly. <laughs> you know. But best experience, the last day of the last warp Tour in 2018 – it Aww. was so there there was a band called Don Broco, UK band. I love Don Broco. Don Broco was on that year. Don Broco was so fun. And like at the time, I don't know how it is now, but at the time they weren't huge in the US, but they had a massive following in the UK. Yeah. But what happened on Warp Tour is I feel like there's always bands where the crew 
really latches onto them and they were like the crew favorite because they were all really friendly really nice and the music was so good that like everyone on the tour just loved them and it was the last day and I was watching them kind of you watch your favorite bands on the last day so oh, yeah. farewell and I realized like almost the whole tour was at their set and I think it was a song everybody I love that song they, where they started a circle pit yeah and I realized the circle pit was literally just all of my friends Aww. and almost everyone from the tour jumped in and it was just really fun like it wasn't violent it wasn't crazy yeah you know a circle pit you're just running around in a circle and we're all skipping and dancing and yeah. holding hands and just having the best time see I can get behind a circle pit I love a circle pit um so it wasn't proper mosh pit but it was I think a really it positive experience that is so sweet though like just camaraderie which i think to me is really the epitome of a mosh pit is like it looks so violent from the outside but on the inside it's all like warm and fuzzy oh yeah and everybody's looking out for each other i love seeing like those tiktok videos where people are just like having their own little moment in the middle of the mosh pit like whether they're just like doing a silly dance or like they're doing their little (laughs) two-step in the middle in their own space like those are the best things Mm -hmm. ever it just makes me so happy to see that yeah on the same kind of topic, what is your best festival experience? Hmm. Best festival experience. Um, I just love Welcome to Rockville. I I love all the Danny Wimmer festivals. I have so much fun every time I go. But for me, Welcome to Rockville is the fun one because it's sort of hometown. It's Well, now it's yeah. in Daytona, so it's like an hour away from me. It's on the Speedway, so if anybody's into NASCAR, you're like, oh, yeah. you can walk on the NASCAR Speedway if you're backstage. Now, I will tell you, like, I'm not into NASCAR like that, but being able to walk on <laughs> that so Speedway cool. for the first time was kind of, like, surreal. It's also way more vertical than people realize. Yes. Like, that thing's... And it's it's straight massive. Up. Like you feel so small in that speedway. Mm-hmm. It's such a unique and like fun, cool location for a festival. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, and that's where I get to see my favorite bands because although I love sort of the scene bands, like what I used to see at Warp Tour and stuff, I really love the active rock now. So that's where I get to also geek out and be a fan. That's always I, the best. I've gone to festivals like Bonnaroo and things like that, and it's just like not my scene. Yeah. So when you really resonate with the bands and the scene and the audience, it just that's to me what makes the experience is when you feel like you're at home at the festival. So for yeah. me, Rockville feels like home, even though it's a lot of like creepy men and stuff. Um, but, you know, it comes with the territory. Yeah, I think that's just <laughs> sadly as women something that we experience. Yeah in any type of live music scene it's not even rock i've experienced it in edm i've experienced it in Mm -hmm. like pop like indie pop i have had guys be weird to me that's surprising yeah also is it (laughs) i don't know that's why this podcast exists though yeah exactly you know get to talk about it in a safe space safe space but anyways that was supposed to be positive experience and rockville is positive and generally speaking i feel very safe there and it's okay it's all good I went to Rockville for my first time this past year, and it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. I probably had the most fun that I've ever had at any festival. I haven't been to very many, but I think that was probably my best festival experience too, just because it was the same thing with, it was all the bands that I love, and it was all the music that I'm currently into, but I also had the wonderful opportunity to work it, and then I got to hang out with the Return to Dust guys all day. Like, it was just a blast. Everybody was having fun. And then we had catering. Yeah, we did. Did we see any bands? Yes. We saw Architects, and not to put you on blast, but we definitely walked up, and I was like, oh, Architects is playing. And you were like, this is Architects? (laughs) Just because it was, it was like a not yeah. super heavy song. Well, I remember them from, I mean, their early days. Yeah. And then like my favorite Architects album, Lost Forever, Lost Together. Yeah. That's like heavy, heavy. Heavy, So yeah. then when I looked and saw Sam, I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but they were great. And that, was, that, was, that was so good. Yeah. It made me very happy. Because the song that you were like, this is Architects, I was like, this is one of my favorite Ar- Architects songs. Like, what and are you talking is, about? I appreciate you though, because I, I yeah. now I need the, the young folks to keep me Yeah. Hit, so thank you. <laughs> And, oh, were you there? I don't know if you were there, but I got to see Bad Omens. I watched them. Yeah, I don't think we were together, though. Probably not. But I know you were doing the concrete chant with me in spirit. For sure. Yeah. But, (laughs) yeah. Okay. Anyway. Onwards. (laughs) Onwards. I really like this question. I think this is going to be fun. 
who was the interview interviewer that inspired you to become one of the best in metal mm. that's really that's well really that's sweet. also like such a nice compliment yeah. thank you um so I have a couple that really inspired me in terms of like music journalism they're a little niche but to those who know you know the first one for me was I forgot her last name oh that uh, okay her first name was Phoebe I think Phoebe, Phoebe Dextra don't quote me on that. Her name is Phoebe, and she was on Much Music. Goth chick, shaved head, covered in tattoos. Really, really cool. So, like, I think if you Google Phoebe Much Music, she'll come up, which Much Music is basically the MTV equivalent in Canada. So, honestly, I don't even know how I found her. I was just watching online. Yeah. So, I, yeah. Um, but she was just, like, the alt chick of, of, like, a very mainstream TV. Yeah platform um so I was really inspired by her and just the way that she was so personable and I just felt like I thought she was super cool and I don't know I I just really admired her so I used to watch her a lot for notes and that was the thing when I was younger is I used to just watch talk shows all the time and just note how they were handling interviews right I mean I know it's like cancelable now but I used to watch Ellen like after school when I was a kid like obviously major talk show right um I watched a lot of like The View (laughs) just random like old lady (laughs) daytime TV um but yeah so for me Phoebe was the first one where it was like okay this is a music person that I admire right and then an obvious pick was Tiffany Mink who did the Warped Tour pit blogs in 2010. Of course. Which was the first year that I went to Warped Tour. So I was watching the pit blogs to figure out how to prepare to go to my first show and ended up just being a huge fan of Tiffany. Like she was just super personable as well and knowledgeable, fun, quirky. And then when I got the job in 2015, she actually came out to a date. So it was the craziest full circle moment of my life. Like we got a photo together. I was asking her for all kinds of advice and I was a little starstruck. Actually, my first, my first Warped Tour, I saw her in catering and took a photo with her. Like that photo still exists somewhere. That's so cute. Little did I know I would have the same job five years later. So that was crazy. You're making me kind of like reminisce now because confession, I was a super big fan of you on (laughs) Warped Tour. (laughs) Okay, we've been friends for how long and you're just now telling me yeah. this? No. Oh. Because I was embarrassed. <laughs> no. Thank you. Yeah, but I, you were just so good at what you did. And that was like what made me excited to go to Warp Tour. I only went to Warp Tour 2016, 17, and 18. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I was pit blogging in 2016. That's really wild. Yeah. Thank you. But I just remember like, you're so cool. <laughs> And I like saw your all, all your videos and I was like, oh, I want to do that one day. Wow. Here we and are. This is this is like the cool thing about the music industry is like you end up with a lot of full circle moments like this. Oh, yeah. I feel like the, in, the music industry is so much smaller mm-hmm. than people think it is like once you're in it. Yeah. But like from the outside, it seems like so big. There's so many genres. There's so many people, so many different types of jobs. But the amount of times I've like cross paths with people that I've worked with before or like had like little experiences like that before so many times Mm -hmm. that's happened and it's like honestly it's felt so nice like being able to have that working in an industry like this that feels so like daunting and competitive Mm -hmm. it's so nice to have those moments that are just like oh this is working out this is like a full circle moment this is like actually happening well we all get into it because we love it and so when you have those moments it makes it rewarding and it's it's really reaffirming of why we grind and work because like definitely this industry is not to make tons of money it is not for status like we do it because we love it like that's because otherwise most of i mean the hard work you see to get to any point where you're known it's years and years so you need those little blips of joy and i think that's like special too about like people with a music journalist background Mm -hmm. because music journalism is such a passion driven career that I feel like those are where you're going to find like some of the most passionate people that grow in the music industry or work in the music industry like they're gonna be like yeah I started as a music journalist Mm -hmm. and I think that's super cool because most of the time that's also making experiences for yourself like yeah putting yourself out there too yeah, I mean, even the moments. bands, like, I loved in high school, and then suddenly I'm on their tour bus, and we're all pals. It's just like, well, this is what I do it for, because yeah. I, I love these people, and I love what they've done for me personally through their music, and now I get to kind of give back and support them. Like, it's just lovely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Well, thank you, though. I didn't know that you watched my videos. And that's yeah. really, really neat. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you were, you're, I mean, you're kind of famous to me. But now you know me and you're just like, damn, she wasn't as cool as I thought. She's kind of a nerd. No, I still think, <laughs> no, I still think, I brag about you to all of my friends. Oh, and my mom. Okay, that's when you know it's real, when mom's involved. That's what I'm saying. I <laughs> tell my mom how cool you are all the time. Damn, thanks. I tell my mom about you too. That's so cute. <laughs> okay. Anyways, that's enough of that. Next. <laughs> anyway. Um, what have you learned from doing She's With The Band? Hmm. So She's With The Band has been an interesting one because I think I had imposter syndrome when I started the podcast of like, well, women have come a long way in the industry. Do we still really need this podcast? I mean, look at like Spirit Box, right? Right. Like, they're doing so well. Like these bands are thriving. Yeah. What's the necessity for like female power now and it's so necessary it is so necessary <laughs> it, it, and that's really what I've learned through doing she's with the band is like misogyny is still very much alive and well but we've scared people enough to where it's more subliminal than it yes. used to be so it's all very behind the scenes under the radar Maybe it's in a passive aggressive comment or the way your credential is checked multiple times or the way you're not allowed in a certain space because you're a woman. So, or, or you're not hired for a job because bands don't feel comfortable having a woman on tour. Things like that where it's like, well, misogyny is still very much alive and well. Equality is not fully there yet. And I'm not sitting here saying like women are better than anyone else, but we deserve to be equal. And I've heard so many stories of the most incredible musicians and professionals in the industry who you would think on the outside would never experience these things and the stories that we come out with are just so jarring to me yeah. but I also feel like the most productive thing that I can do that I've really learned through this podcast is giving an additional platform like I'm so grateful that NotFest has given me this this podcast because there's so much more representation Definitely, now yeah. for us and I think it's through representation and making our voices as loud as possible and showing what we are capable of and why we're in these spaces and why we're amazing in the metal sphere the more we can improve upon building towards equality so um i think that's been a really big lesson for me of just like this is still very much necessary even if on the surface level it doesn't seem it yet that is so well said thank you so well said and i could not agree more because these are I feel like just conversations that have died down so much, people almost like forget to have them sometimes. So where people ask why they're necessary, I get yeah. comments all the time of like, "Oh, I wish it would stop whining about how hard it is to be a woman." And it's like, "Well, I'll stop whining when it's a little easier." Yeah, <laughs> so. like, I don't know what your experience has been. Maybe you should try being a woman in the music industry. <laughs> My give fault. It, give it a shot. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. They have no idea. They have no idea. How does it feel to work with people who love you a lot? <laughs> okay, I know who that came from. That was from Rachel, my colleague at Adam Splitter PR. Cute. Which I just want to shout them out. I put that there because I want to shout them out. I'm going to shout out Adam Splitter too. Thank Adam you. Splitter is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, Amy Shiretto, Rachel, Tim, Shane, Taylor, Seth, Dream Team in Music Publicity. When I knew that I wanted to pursue publicity, Amy Sharetta was the first person I went to asking for advice on how to do it. Little did I know, three years later, I'd be working with her. And it's been a dream. Genuinely the most positive work atmosphere. I mean, we work with the most incredible bands in the scene. Oh, yeah. Like, Adam Splitter kind of dominates most bands. If you're wondering who represents them, it's probably Adam Splitter. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> Adam Splitter. Just do a little yeah. Google and, oh, Adam Splitter. Yep. And so, I, I mean, I'm getting to work with so many of my favorite bands um, and and in an environment that is so positive, educational, I'm growing, and I feel very loved and supported. I just, I love Adam Splitter so much. So shout out to everybody. Thank you for having me. I think it's really important to have a workspace that's yes. so positive and uplifting like that, I haven't too. always. <laughs> yeah, me either. And just the change from going to a, a workspace that's not so positive and like has mm -hmm. ne negative people, toxic energy to working with people that uplift you. I can imagine that must be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very grateful for them and grateful for the projects I get to work on too. I mean, I just had like Wage Wars album 
campaign, which was yes. so freaking cool. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I can't even, I don't know which ones I can announce that I'm working on, but like, just go on the Adam Splitter website, you'll see. Exactly. <laughs> just plugging all the projects right now. Yes. <laughs> so how, this, this is a tough question. I, I would have a tough time with this, but how did you deal with rejection early on? I have a podcast and often getting rejections can sting. I'm trying to work through it. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming they mean rejections in terms of like requesting guests. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like to me. It's hard. It's hard. However, the way I always looked at it when I started my YouTube channel was request everything. The worst that can happen is they say no. Exactly. Right. So like I remember being 16 requesting a Deftones interview. Like who do I think I am? (laughs) But if you don't shoot your shot, you'll never get it. And if they respond saying no, you have the contact. Yeah. And now they know who you are. So there's a benefit in still requesting it and anticipating even if it's a rejection. But the best thing that can happen is they say yes, right? And even if it's if this is at all in terms of like work opportunities as well, any honestly anything in life, I've always said a no gets you closer to a yes. Yes. So the things that are meant for you will come to you. It's not personal. Like, every podcast has to start somewhere and grow. So, like, even if you have to start with some baby bands just to show credibility and, like, you know, sort of finesse your content and refine what you're doing before you get the big names, that's totally okay. Like, everyone starts somewhere. I don't know. I I wouldn't say a no is personal. Everything's just business. And everything's just, you know, the bands have a certain amount of time to do interviews. They maybe have a specific schedule. Maybe ask the publicist – hey, I just want to know why you declined. What could I improve upon? Or what do you need to see in order for me to request this again later and get a yes? Yeah, of course. I don't get that question often enough from podcasts mm-hmm. to send interview requests to me when I'm representing a band. I think it's really important too, even when you do get rejected, like don't ghost the email thread. It's yeah. always really important to follow up always and respond. say like, oh, thank you for responding. Thank you for getting back to me. Like I understand the availability. Yeah. Like just make sure you put yourself out there and putting that extra response in just because it'll kind of secure that connection chivalry goes a long way it does. and most interviewers don't do that so it makes really? you stand out believe it or not yeah that's actually surprising yeah like that's always been something that i felt like as an interviewer like i just feel like it's common courtesy just build the connection yeah. even if you get a no you're making a connection with someone in the industry and i think kind of on the same note like I have this like crazy story with like rejection like it's not a scenario where I got rejected but it was a scenario where I put myself out there with no hopes at all of getting the opportunity so back when I first started in concert photography I had maybe a year of experience under my belt I had only photographed really really small club bar venues and one of my favorite bands at the time was Imagine Dragons and they were going on tour and coming to my city and I really wanted to try to photograph that show so I reached out to their manager which is not what you're supposed to do but (laughs) I reached out to publicists for requests yeah (laughs) I didn't know that at the time yeah I'm saying that to anyone listening no yeah I'm I'm saying to anyone listening I didn't know that at the time I was 17 trying to figure things out totally but I reached out and I just like said I was working for this independent magazine, pitched myself and was like, can I request a photo pass? And I got it. See? And that was the biggest moment of my career up to that point and opened so many doors. And I just feel mm-hmm. like that was something that the whole time I was typing out that email, I never thought in a million years that yeah. I would have gotten a yes from that. And it was scary. But if you don't try, it's an automatic no. Yeah. Yeah. You don't even have the chance of a yes. So that happens always, with Ariana Grande too. Yeah, got an interview with her. <laughs> we were, yeah. Like, what exactly? It's like one of those where I was like, I don't know. I'm just gonna put this out there and end yeah. up getting it. That's but like, crazy. If you don't ask, it's a no. Exactly. So you might as well try, and maybe it's a yes. So I feel like that's for me. Like dealing with rejection is. It's a great I lesson. just always keep that in my mind. Like if you don't ask, you'll never know. Period. Yes. Yes. No, that was great. Thank you for the insight. It's true. Yeah, of course. I like to share those stories like that, especially if it'll help people like feel more motivated and inspired to like go out and do what they feel passionate about. 
Now, we're nearing the end, sadly, but this is going to go into the deep dives, okay? Oh, shoot. What was being on Warp Tour really like? It's as cool as you think, honestly. I, um, it was a dream. Like, getting to be on the tour bus and waking up in a different city every day. Best sleep of my life was in a tour bus bunk. That's crazy. Just getting lulled to sleep in a little cozy coffin. I want to sleep in a tour bus (laughs) bunk now. Like, it was just, it was truly like a summer camp where every morning I, like, would roll out of bed and my favorite metalcore band's, like, on at 9 a.m. And I'm just like, wow, what is this life? Did bands play it that early in the day? Or maybe like 10. Maybe like 10. They played that early? I don't know. It felt early. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I, like, I don't remember it like that but I don't know ooh. it would start early I think doors were at 10 that's crazy and so it was like just all day and and truly like making best friendships that have lasted to this day like it's been almost a decade of these friendships because Aww. you know you're in close quarters for three months with these people you become really close really fast end of the night you're at a barbecue partying together and then you do it all over again and then it's like 14 days straight of warp tour and then like no days off um but it never felt exhausting it was just like such a joy yeah yeah but yeah being on a tour i mean look it didn't come without its drama honestly oh, there, there's a warp tour reality show for a reason it's, you know there's really a warp there was one yeah there for was? Like, i think it got like two seasons that's crazy i didn't yeah. even know that yeah yeah that's I'll, I'll show you later oh yeah <laughs> that's but yeah crazy. it was it, it was truly the as much of a dream job as people think it was i have a little warp tour tattoo on my ankle to signify she showed me earlier. It's yeah. so cute. It's a little tombstone that says Warp Tour on it. So I got cutie. it on as it is his tour bus as well. While you were on Warp Tour, I was still? on Warp Tour. That's so fun. Yeah. That's a cute little memory. Yeah, I have like little memes like that. So, yeah. Kind of on the same note of talking about your work, how did you get involved with Knotfest? See, that one, I think I penciled that one in at the bottom. You did. I skipped over one and then we're going to go back to it. (laughs) Oh, because I keep getting that question over and over. I think that's a good question. I want to know right now. Yeah. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) getting me back on topic. Anyways, so I, being a publicist, am usually, my job is to send the bands that I work with to music publications to get coverage, whether it's an interview or a blog post or whatever. And so I had pitched one of the metal bands I was working with to not fest and it was their content director Chris hi Chris if you're watching this I know you are and um so I pitched Chris and he responded going is that warped Tory which was my nickname at the time from warped Tory That's people so called cute. me warped Tory and he was like is that you and I was just like hi yes it is and we ended up just kind of sidebarring being like oh you watched my videos you know who I am that's crazy like yeah. I love not fest I love what you're doing Didn't think anything of it because I was not doing interviews or doing any music journalism at the time. I was fully in PR mode. A few months went by and I was like, I really miss this interview thing. I miss blogging. I miss all that. So out of the blue, I just shot an email to Chris and I said, are you looking for hosts by any chance? (laughs) Because I would love to be a part of NotFest. To me, like truly the best metal outlet out there right now. Integrity in their content, passion for what they do. I was like, this is what I want to be involved in if I'm going to get back into it. Within like a day, I was on a call with Chris and with Matt. Love you, Matt. And um, that's where I pitched She's With The Band. And it took a few months to get off the ground and we made it happen. And it's that the rest is history. But um, this yeah. is what we talk about with shooting your shot. Shooting your shot. The worst that can happen is they say no. Exactly. Best thing that happens is you have a podcast. <laughs> and good luck with it being as good as this one, though. Shoot. Honestly, I, I extend the challenge. Okay. Hit me. Whoever wants to start a podcast. Uh, To me, there's no podcast wars. No, to me, there's no competition in (laughs) this. Not in a bad way, but like in a a fun competition way. Podcast wars. Podcast wars. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. We have one more question. Okay. Are you ready? Of course. Well, what is one thing that you wish people knew about you? Oh, wow. You really caught me off guard with this last one. I actually I know. I need to think about it for a minute. I think for me, one thing I really wish people understood just in general with people on the internet is when you comment on a video or you comment on a post, I am on the other side. I read everything. I am here. And I'm a very feeling person. Yes. (laughs) I'm an introvert. I know I'm very talkative when I'm on camera, but off camera, I'm very quiet. I feel a lot of feelings. I read everything. And I do my best these days to not take things to heart. But like, 
if you say something to the internet persona of me, it is me. So I think in general, like that's something I want to extend, not just to myself, but anyone that you're speaking to online, remember the person on the other side. Yeah, definitely. Um, Because like ask yourself, would you say this to their face or not, right? I think at this point, mostly I just get really vulgar stuff in my inbox. Um, And so I wish people were a little more considerate. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, like I'm just, I'm a feeling loving person. <laughs> I agree. We, we want to spread positivity on the internet. There is no room for hate, for weird messages and things like that. We don't want that. I'm all for constructive criticism. Like if somebody wants oh, to tell yeah. me something about the podcast that you love or don't love, I want to hear it. Like I don't want to discourage people from messaging me. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, just consider why are you saying what you're saying? And would you say it to my face? <laughs> and sometimes I think even if you feel very strongly about something and you feel that you want to say something, just think of how you're saying it as well because it the way that something is worded can change a comment so drastically mm-hmm. and give it so much more of like a negative connotation if you really meant it in like a constructive, like positive way. So think twice before you say something. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I think that's it. I mean, I don't really, there's, I'm not that interesting of a person. I live and breathe she's metal. I live and breathe music. That's all I do. She's lying to all you. All I do is work. So really? She's lying to you. <laughs> I mean, do you, what do, I, how would you answer this question? That's all I've got. Like, like for me or for you? For, for me, what would you say? <laughs> I don't want to expose you. No, it's so. fine. You can. Tori's a Disney adult. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm a Disney adult, too. So Yeah, we do love Disney. We love Disney. See, it, that, But I think yeah. that's fun. Like, that is fun. But I'm a cool one. Yeah. <laughs> like, cool she's Disney my adult. designated, like, Disney person. When I want to go to Disney, I go to Tori because yeah. I know I'm going to have the best day ever at Disney with her. It's true. But I, just little Every things time. like that, I feel like people, like, don't know about <laughs> you because they're, like, more personal. And, like, that's true. But I feel like that makes you so fun. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I mean... I'm a Florida person for life, really, oh, truly. Yeah. So, anyways, Florida woman out. <laughs> Those are all the questions. <laughs> Florida woman two out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, thank you, Jade, for uh, yeah. for putting up with me, for asking all the questions, and being a great little co-host today. Yeah, this has been so fun. You this nailed was it. Really fun. This oh. was your first podcast. So. This was my first podcast. Cheers to more. And everybody who's watching, thank you for being. A listener of She's of the Band, this podcast would be nothing without you. So if you want to keep watching, it's every other week here on OffFest.com. You can also follow, um, subscribe, all the things if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Instagram is SWTBpod. And with, uh, with that being said, I think we're out of here. Bye, guys. Bye.